Hello, this is God of Tomatoes, and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on Battle for Westnoff, Son of the Black Eye. The video will be divided into three sections, and this first section will be using a mod list I have in the description. To start off, you're going to want to recruit three Wolf Riders and three Archers. Send your leader and the Archers to the encampment on the right side, and the Wolf Riders down the left side to gather villages. Around the time you reach the encampment, the first enemy should start arriving. Use the Forest and Keep to defeat them, and pour all the XP into your leader and one of the Archers. You can also start recruiting grunts, you will need at least 3, but if your luck is bad, you may need up to 8. At the same time, have one of your wolf riders head north along the side of the lake to reach your keep. Your wolf rider will reach the keep around the time that the first wave of enemies dies. You'll also want to have the other two wolf riders distract the enemies near the forests and river. Don't attack the enemies with your wolf riders, just focus on wasting their time or drawing them away. Once you have your level 2 archer or a close, start pouring XP into the wolf rider as well and wait until daytime is just starting turn 8 or turn 14. Then make sure you have at least 2 grunts, even if they're not at full health, and send down your units to attack the enemy keep. You should reach about halfway when you get stopped by a few enemies in the open at night. When your wolf rider levels up, make sure to upgrade it to a pillager. Also, some of the enemies on horseback will be distracted by capturing villages on the left side of the map, decreasing the difficulty. After finishing the enemies, stop at the villages just before the enemy keep and keep fighting until the enemy leader attacks one of your units. He will do this when one of them hits a bit less than half health. While waiting, make sure to keep your leader around the village at the back and your archer and pillager around the two villages in front. It's okay if your leader gets a bit wounded here, just make sure to keep him out of the enemy's zone of controls if he does. After the enemy leader attacks, surround him and finish him off by first slowing him and then attacking with your leader and archer. Make sure that your leader and archer and a wolf rider level up before you finish and you'll be given a choice to do scenario 2 or skip straight to scenario 3 by seeking aid before fighting the humans. Scenario 2 is extremely difficult and not necessary to beat. It will give you two extra level 2 units though, so I highly suggest watching my next tutorial video on how to beat it. This second section is going to be without any mods and will largely follow the same strategy as in the first section. The main thing to take away here is that since I had much less luck, I had to recruit more grunts and didn't get to start advancing on the enemy keep until around turn 14. This is mainly to show that even with less luck, the scenario is still fairly easy to beat and the same strategy can be used so long as you recruit more grunts while defending the keep. You may also notice that in this attempt, all three of my wolf riders on the left side died. If this happens to you, don't be afraid to just recruit another wolf rider up at the keep and train it there. The reason why I do not do this originally is because it just generally wastes extra gold since not all three wolf riders will usually die. I also didn't mention this in the last attempt because it didn't happen, but if your leader starts to reach around low health or even at half health, make sure to heal him up at least some bit before heading downwards to attack the enemy keep. If you can't heal him fully before turn 14, try to keep him in the forest as much as possible, that way he doesn't die before he levels up. For this third section, I again won't be using any mods, but it will be using a slightly different, more optimized strategy. This is better for if you're either a cautious player or if you're extremely unlucky. As you may have noticed in the previous two attempts, I ended up with only two units other than my leader left alive, and at least one of my units was on low health. This was intentional since I didn't want to waste any gold, and I knew that I would be able to win with the number of troops I had. However, if I failed to kill the leader, this would have caused me to lose one of my level 2 units. This strategy is mostly the same, however, since the enemy leader tends to recruit a lot of heavy infantry, when you reach the keep where you normally summon grunts, you will additionally recruit two more archers. You can either do this during the first wave of enemies if there are a lot of heavy infantry among them, or you can do this after finishing them off. As you descend towards the enemy keep, this will cause you to clear out some of the enemies faster, and will allow you to guarantee that you don't lose any level 2 units against the enemy leader. The reason why this works is because the archers have a fire ranged attack, which is the only attack at this stage which can deal decent damage to the heavy infantry. Additionally, their ranged attacks make them good for surrounding and quickly killing most of the enemy units, since they don't recruit many archers. The downside to this strategy though is it costs 28 extra gold, so unless you get lucky like I did, you will be going into the next scenario with much less gold. If you skip to scenario 3, this isn't a big issue. However, if you play scenario 2, you will need as much gold as you can possibly have. Thank you for watching, and if this was helpful to you, please leave a like and subscribe, that way I know to make more content like this in the future.